always have to wake up. Ha! Blue lights make him blue, like the Navi? Na Navi? Is that right? I haven't watched this movie in a decade, but I'm immediately surprised by this introduction. Like, not only is he blue, but we see him wake up a bunch from his avatar just like this, and the opening line is about how sooner or later he has to wake up, but the entire point of the movie is that he eventually won't have to wake up from the dream. Cameron, you poet. In cryo, you don't dream at all. I mean, you gotta give it to this writing team. Oh. No, it's, it's just Cameron. Well, I just got even more impressed. Everything is set up for his time on Pandora. Controlling an avatar is like dreaming. He'll be blue, resource theft killed his brother, and the avatar will allow him to walk. So a week before Tommy's gonna ship out, the guy with a gun ends his journey for the paper in his wallet. And what a funny but apropos reduction of money. Almost like it's weird to go to war over rocks. It's interesting they keep his disability a secret by opening in zero gravity. Up ahead was Pandora. You grew up hearing about it. Being introduced to a brand new world through reflection. Also saying you grew up hearing about it is a nice way to contextualize where we are with the story and this technology. You could step into his shoes, so to speak. Ableism in under three minutes. You know what, the other guy called him out with a look, so nah, you guys suck. And the pay is good. Very good. That little trill was killing me for a few days because I knew I'd heard it before and I kept thinking maybe it was just Avatar, but no, I could feel a different movie and then I went into James Horner's filmography and thought, sneakers? Close, but not quite it. Maybe it was the Pelican Brief? Not it. And then I saw it. Enemy at the Gates. It's played throughout multiple pieces. It's really a motif of the movie and James thought I wouldn't notice. And now you've all been down this earworm journey with me. James Horner plagiarized himself. And I don't care because it's really just a great trill. Remember people, you lose that map, you're unconscious in 20 seconds, you're dead in four minutes. Neat, suffocation shadowing. They can fix a spinal if you got the money but not on vet benefits. A lot of sci-fi movies and shows will paint an idyllic future. Star Trek goes as far as making money obsolete, but let's be honest, this is where we're headed. The tech exists to fix his back, but it'll cost you, even as a veteran. Oh, and also humanity has learned nothing and we're still doing a colonialism. First sign that perhaps the Imperialists aren't super popular with the locals. And the second sign. They're fond of arrows, dipped in a neurotoxin that'll stop your heart in one minute. Which is actually funny since they look like they'd completely remove your heart from your chest based on size. Also, dang, I wonder where these colonizers are from. Yeah, I guess we'll never know. And don't get mad at me for this, I didn't put the American flag in there. And for the record, I'm gonna call Jake a colonizer a few times because like, that's what this movie is about. So get off my back, imaginary people who haven't even seen this video yet. It is my job to keep you alive. I will not succeed. You know what? That's some frank honesty from the proud racist. Sorry, I'm Norm Spellman. Joel David Moore is an accomplished actor with a huge filmography, but all I think when I see him is... Adios, turd nuggets! Man, even their heartbeats are thunderous. Blue Boy is thick. Is this right? I just... Say whatever to huh. the video log? Yeah. Even our main character is questioning the use of narration. I like it, James. Tight lampshade. Sigourney Weaver waking up on another foreign planet. Ripley cannot catch a break. Fun fact, this was my instant messenger font for... <sighs> far too long. A virus! Try and use big words. Might seem like a dig, but I think he's actually trying to help Jake. Let's not pretend like every choice was the most subtle, but hey, you gotta play to the masses. So greedy businessman practices his putt in the control room, the bleeding heart scientist messes with his putt, and the racist bloodthirsty colonel has scars on his face. We build them a school, we teach them English. Why is it with colonizers always thinking their language is superior? Meanwhile, there are actual languages on Earth that communicate through humming or whistling. But yeah, the gold standard is the language of turd nuggets. This is why we're here unobtainium, because this little gray rock sells for 20 million a kilo. And laugh all you want, but this guy is not Steve Jobs. He's Mike Duke or Charles Koch. He doesn't need an inventive name for the resource because he's only interested in how much money it makes him. I'm not even making a judgment on him, just pointing out that this goofy resource name is realistic. Just relax and let your mind go blank. It shouldn't be hard for you. Ah, Jarhead Clan jokes. There's a few more sensory motor reflex tests we need to run, so take it easy. Oh. <laughs> I love the doctor's little oop. It's so accurate to how people in authority who don't really have any tangible power over you would be. Yeah. Appropriate reaction. It was a shock the first time to see other avatars after the buildup of these two getting synced in, but it gives the story some history. I can't blame him, that's a pretty great feeling, amplified for Jake since it's probably been a while since he felt it. 
Jake is clearly not an alien fan, otherwise he wouldn't be surprised. Also, Sigourney went to Stanford, so nice rep. Don't play with that, you'll go blind. Haha, first hint that tales are more than just tales, and by hint, I mean a sledgehammer to the neck. You guys are packing some heavy gear. Yeah, that's because we're not the only thing flying around out there, or the biggest. Michelle Rodriguez always gets amazing action movie lines. Doesn't give anything away, but tells just enough so you know things are gnarly. I come out here, day one, think I felt like a shaved tail, Louie. I hate you. I hate you so much. I look forward to your inevitable cringe death. Learn these savages from the inside. I want you to gain their trust. Again, looking forward to it. That's allowed, right? It's what I'm supposed to be feeling. You get me what I need, I'll see to it you get your legs back when you rotate home. Haha, <laughs> you won't need them. Everyone knows a huge draw of this movie was how gorgeous it was, the feeling of actually being transported to an alien planet, and I gotta be honest, it does not disappoint over a decade later. The animals are familiar at times, yet unique. Even the landscape isn't so crazy you can't insert yourself there, but it's still a level of fantastical that we were all wide-eyed with Jake in the forest, especially if you got to experience it in 3D. And here I go, scanning. Even as Jake is bored out of his mind, we're learning about the connection all the trees and their roots have. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, <laughs> this is probably super realistic. It reminds me of that viral video of that hiker just repeatedly yelling F you at that mountain lion following him. They don't speak English, but we still really want to stick it to them, and we've only figured out a handful of ways to sound intimidating. Run! Definitely run! Predator advice, and I'm gonna keep talking about the creature design because it's phenomenal. The hammerhead rhino looking Ankh-Sik is humongous, but has those flamboyant colors on its head, and the purple leopard Thanator Palalukan is more vicious looking than anything we have on our Earth, and we have the blobfish. By the way, Palalukan means dry mouth bringer of fear, which I don't even understand what it's truly aces. But something about this beast taking M60 fire and then tossing it away makes me feel bad for questioning the dry mouth bringer of fear, but I guess we know its stance on gun control. <laughs> Destroy those drums, where do you get those? Yeah, do that. You might be thinking, but he's using the knife to make the stick. Just use the knife as a weapon, but you'd be revealing to me that you've never seen this movie because keeping your attackers as far away from you as possible is the goal. A knife is much too close for, say, this guy, who sounds like a T-Rex. Hate her toes, but love how she's able to jump to her feet completely silently. I wonder how many signs like this I've missed because I've been all, get away from my arrow tree flu if I'm trying to kill this guy probably a lot. Nope! I think it's their apparent moistness that really pushes them over the edge for me. Real nightmare material. <laughs> yup. Aw, poor slimy pupper. That's stupid. Ignorant like a child. You're like a baby. I love that she doesn't hold back and keeps laying into him. And I mean, she has a point about the baby thing. Hilarious that he swats them away twice. He's such a doofus. I love it. That sound is a lot weirder when you realize they're disconnecting their, you know, the thing that makes you go blind. And also gives you hairy palms, if I remember correctly. Again, knife to the bony tail. Jake probably has no clue why they are holding him by his hair, but we sure do. Is he a human demon or is he blue Jesus and these guys are trying to touch the hem of his garment? Eh? <laughs> She has a blood tasting spike. That's a spike just for tasting folk's blood. Not in a cannibal way, just in a so I can tell if you're sus way. It is hard to fill a cup which is already full. Dang, Moat dropping life lessons right out of the gate. My cup is empty. Solid response, more jarhead clan jokes. I get it, Norm. You spend your whole life working towards something and this guy shows up and becomes a chosen one because he's an empty cup. Don't worry, Norm. Johnny Lawrence got his own show, like, only a few decades later. Find out what the blue monkeys want. Nice, a little old school racism. Look at all that cheddar. Cheddar? Oof, hard pass. This smarmy little turd nugget gets killed, right? Cheddar only refers to money in the Charlverse. Gross, but cute. Groot. Well, first I heard the T-Rex noise, and now that's definitely the Velociraptor call, which is obviously just a fun reference, but also blends itself to the whole Garden of Eden thing. The Na'vi are still living with their prehistoric creatures. See, it's a little weird. I feel like that should be censored, but okay, okay. This honestly seems pretty awesome and would be super helpful in the real world. Plug my tail into my car to just think to my destination? Sign me up. Is a core structure like a spiral? We're gonna need accurate scans on every column. Roger that. You want to love Jake, and I can actually easily understand his desire to feel useful to the core again, so I'm willing to cut him some slack for now. <laughs> Can't see anything. Exactly. Ain't that a bit. Never change, Michelle. 
Seriously, the design of this world is amazing. We haven't had much that compared to Pandora in the 13 years between this and the sequel. Do not look in her eyes. Someone hasn't seen Nope, otherwise he'd already know that. Ikran is not horse. I don't want to get all colonization is bad here, but it's so on point that Natiri calls the animals they ride horses because it's the word the English speakers would use. And sure, the wiki says dire horses, but a better translation for Pali might be spirit runner or motorcycle, but the humans have just pasted their own interpretation of things purpose onto Navi society. So like, colonization bad. When? When you are ready. Which is a very polite way of saying, not now, Dreamwalker. Dang. Luke Valerian could have used some goggles. Latiri calls me scowling. It means moron. Nickname flirting? This is the first time Jake's hair is noticeably longer, which is a great way of giving us the passage of time, as well as showing his steady slip away from being just a marine, losing his high and tight. It gets even longer as the montage continues, and we see that it's been a month since he started with Neytiri, and now that the high and tight is completely gone, he's also stopped shaving. I really hope this tree hugger crap isn't on the final. <laughs> It doesn't always work, but overall, I do love how unsubtle this movie can be. You'll be thankful it's on the final because otherwise you'd be dead. Because the tree hugger crap's gonna save your life. I enjoyed that she makes it look easy, but if you're really watching what she's doing, it's like a quick time event where you have to use the momentum and vault off while changing direction in order to keep slowing down from leaf to leaf. Jake clears up the difficulty level pretty quick. With Natiri, it's learn fast or die. Is that the slogan of New Hampshire? That thing does not look like it's having a good time. Evolution is apparently kind of a jerk on Pandora. Aw, poor little colonizers all tuckered out. But I have a little bit of sympathy since he's basically living two lives right now. Training full time in a culture that grows up learning all this stuff and trying to keep his human body going while doing daily logs. Colonizing's tough work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all saw it. All energy is only borrowed, and one day you have to give it back. There's a good song by the streets about that. Everything else is just for us. Arguably a good practice, whatever planet you're on. Okay, I take it back. Y'all know about intrusive thoughts, right? Yeah, I don't think it would be good for me to be connected to my car while driving next to a cliff. You gotta go where the banshees are. Hoorah. Well, I guess you can take the mind out of the marine and put it in the avatar body, but you can't take the marine out of the mind that's now in that avatar body. That's right, right? Did I do that right? There's probably not a live action thing on screen right now, and it's just so gorgeous. <laughs> There are vines, and then there are vines. Outstanding. Steve Zahn imitating Timothy Oliphant couldn't have said it better. That's right, you get rewarded if you watch all my videos. Growing up human can be tough, but no one ever told me to put a dragon in a headlock or die trying, so it's not that bad. Although I did have to rear triangle choke a kid at recess in fifth grade once, so tomato tomato. That's right. <laughs> You're mine. And I am yours, Jake. Still plenty left to learn, I suppose. Think. Fly! Fly? <laughs> You'd think there'd be a little more training beyond how to mount a Nikron, but I guess I don't know how you teach the Think Fly? Bank left! Really starting to see why Norm is so jealous. I love the way Seize reaches for her with the neural whip. Natiri makes everything look so easy and smooth. It really cannot be overstated how much the visuals hold up. The immersion is full. Sky flirting, but I do feel for Sute. Poor guy doesn't know what's coming. Also, just learned that Sute is MM and I like him even more now. Was I, were you saying something about immersion? Was I saying, you were saying something about immersion, right? Something I just realized this time is that Turok only chases Jake because he's probably already chosen him. Everything is backwards now. Like out there is the true world, and in here is the dream. Jake's transformation from grunt to based eco warrior is handled very well. Seeing him in a literal different body so consistently lends to us feeling the same way as Jake, that Sam Worthington actually looks more out of place in his human form. It doesn't feel forced, it's just how we're used to him. I barely remember my old life. I don't know who I am anymore. And three months later on, that's again even more evident with his grooming. He's left Jake Sully the human behind. You could even say that his lack of maintenance and hygiene is evidence that he's getting addicted to his avatar life but like in an acceptable way. If I do it, I'm one of them. More than you know. That's a powerful image and idea, the way they're all connected like the roots of their trees. And to think, I gotta take drugs for this. You know, those special eye drops they give you at the optometrist that dilate your pupils? And you may choose a woman. Mm-hmm. This woman must also choose me. She already has. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love. And also the weirdest thing you get used to way too fast is their cat ears constantly twitching. I would very much like to know what it feels like to have those ears. There's a deleted scene where they put their ponytails together and if you watch it, you'll understand why it's deleted. Stop! 
Yeah, see, he moved. I know it's like a bit that bad guys are always eating, but have you ever thought about why that is? It makes us realize they don't even care enough about the heinous things they're doing to even stop snacking. And the moral is that he should be fed to an Ikran. A little taste of the nature meets machine we've got coming later. Grace has some features that look more human than the other avatars, and I feel like perhaps since she's a little older and has been working on the project for a while, maybe her avatar was an earlier model when the DNA mixing wasn't as perfected? I mean, she basically has Sigourney Weaver's nose. I don't know if you know this, but Avatar's a pretty long movie, so it's gonna take me two weeks. But don't worry, the script is almost done. It's just too much to edit in one week. But I promise next week we will return with the conclusion to Jake Sully's story.